Hello. Hello, everybody. This is Mila Mitra, uh, representing Space India. I, I would like to welcome all our viewers here today. Uh, we are going to be talking about total lunar eclipse, and it's you know it's a it's a threesome. It's blue moon, super moon, total and lunar eclipse happening tomorrow, uh, January thirty first, and uh, we are excited that from India we will be able to see it. And uh, welcoming, I'm going to welcome today our very special guest, Dr. Jean-Luc Amassi. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning to you and good morning to everyone. And I would also like to welcome uh, Vikrant Naran, senior educator at Space, who will be co-hosting this with me. Very good morning. It's my pleasure to be here. Very good morning to all the school students today and Professor Masi and Mila, ma'am. OK, so uh, I would like to take the chance first to introduce Dr. Masi, who's uh, here with us today. Um, Dr. Masi, Jean-Luc Masi, is the director of the Virtual Telescope Project. And um, you know, we picked out some background about him. His interest in astronomy started in the 1970s, watching science fiction series Star Trek. Uh, he got further drawn into it when he saw beautiful pictures of galaxies and nebulae, as well as watching the moon and the great Orion Nebula, which was with a, with a six centimeter aperture reflector. Soon he added another telescope into his arsenal and he started observing deep sky objects and ventured into astrophotography. Uh, Dr. Massey has discovered all kinds of celestial objects from variable stars to asteroids and even planets orbiting other stars. Asteroid 21795 Massey has been named after him to contribute to astronomy. He started the virtual telescope project comprising of several robotically linked telescopes. More than 10 lakh individuals observe the sky every year through virtual telescope. And, um, you know, most of us here at space also join this project uh, during Global Astronomy Month. Many of our students also log in. And uh, additionally, uh, Dr. Massey is, uh, is regional coordinator for Asteroid Day as a space, and we are lucky to be able to interact with him on that front too. So we, we welcome you here today, Dr. Massey, to interact with our students. We are so excited because we've been working with virtual telescope, observing through it, and uh, we are excited to have you share with us your views on total lunar eclipse. It's, it's a really a pleasure, Mila, for me to be here. And uh, first of all, I want to thank you and your friends and colleagues for your invitation. As you know, we all share the pleasure to bring the stars, to bring the wonders of the universe to the people out there, and especially to students. And one of the reasons why I decided to found the virtual telescope was exactly this, making possible for the young people to discover the wonders of the universe where we live. And it's a pleasure for me to be here. Again, thank you for inviting me and uh, I'm happy to do this together, really. So, so Dr. Massey, as I mentioned in the beginning, we have this very special total lunar eclipse coming up tomorrow. And you know, Space India has many observations planned, public outreach, we have observations at our schools. So we would like to, to, you know, take the chance to ask you to talk a little bit about this eclipse and about eclipses in general. Yes, and uh, I want to say that perhaps lunar eclipses together with the solar ones are for me the most wonderful astronomical events everyone out there can really, really enjoy. You know, we have just one natural satellite, our moon, which is orbiting around the Earth taking a bit less than one month to complete its orbit. Along this journey, the moon out there in the sky is simply uh, moving, I mean, uh, through the stars. And uh, it is also changing its face. Sometimes you see just a quarter of moon. Sometimes you don't see the moon at all. And sometimes you see the full moon. 
And uh, the full moon is uh, exactly the moment when you can have this long-awaited uh, total lunar eclipse. I just want to show you a, a little image. Let me prepare this for you, friends, just to make even um, clearer to you what I mean by saying this, friends. Here it is, a little uh, graphic, just uh, uh, saying us what is happening. The Earth is orbiting around the Sun, okay, and the Sun is uh, a very important factor in eclipses because it is giving us the light. Then we have the Earth, our beautiful planet, and then we have the Moon, our beautiful satellite. As you can see from this graphic, the orbit of the Moon is not in the same plane as the Earth orbit. Just to tell that we don't have a total a lunar eclipse, a total eclipse in particular, every time the Moon is full, because we need a full Moon, of course, to have a lunar eclipse. So it is a bit rarer than once per month. And when the Sun, which is the source of light, our planet where we live and our satellite, the Moon, are just in a perfect line, the Moon is just uh, uh, jumping into the Earth's shadow, and that is what we call an eclipse. And uh, this is what is going to happen basically uh, tomorrow, my friends. So tomorrow we will have this very nice alignment between the Sun, the Earth, and the Moon, just uh, uh, sitting on a straight line, okay, for a while. And during that lapse of time, we will see the Moon with a very nice color. I want to show you this color, by the way, and let me let me find the other picture. Ah, by the way, I want to show you this one as well, just making even clearer to our friends what is happening. You see, simply during a lunar eclipse, our satellite is just surfing the shadow of the Earth. It is a nice alignment, that's all. But how wonderful the results are. And I envy you there in India because tomorrow you will see the total eclipse while in Italy we have to wait for next summer to enjoy one of them. And the, the color of the moon is simply fantastic because of course you have that nice red, red uh, color. And I want to show you this image, for example, this one has been taken by D, uh, Dean Hooper, one of the uh, cooperators of the Virtual Telescope a few years ago. And this is exactly what you will enjoy tomorrow, my friends. Our satellite dressing is a wonderful red color. And uh, I want to invite our audience to think a bit about this. How it is possible that the Moon while it will be deeply inside the Earth of the shadow, will still be visible, and in particular with this red color. The answer to this is our precious atmosphere. What will happen if tomorrow, instead of be on the Earth, you will be on the Moon? Well, on the Moon, you will see a total solar eclipse, of course. But the, the, the great thing will be this. During the totality, you will not see the sun, of course, because the Earth, the huge Earth, is between you, sitting on the moon in that moment, and the sun. But all around the Earth, you will see a very bright, uh, a very bright area, a very bright halo, that will be our atmosphere. And I think that you have ever seen a rainbow out there. Just to mention that the, the light of the sun is actually bringing together a number of colors, okay? And our atmosphere is actually doing a very special job. Here it is, what will happen tomorrow. The light of the sun crossing, of course, the Earth atmosphere will be, uh, I mean, separated in each color. And the red color is the one reaching better the moon. This is why tomorrow you there will see this wonderful event. And 
I, I forgot how many eclipses I have seen so far, my friends, but every time, every time, each of them is a wonderful show to see. So uh, I really, I really uh, would like to invite you, together with my friends of uh, Space India, to go out there, to join there and look up, because this is something truly amazing. And uh, while you can have telescopes and some instruments to enjoy this, you can also enjoy this with your own eyes. And it is one of the most ancient astronomical events that our species has, uh, uh, has enjoyed over its uh, long time of presence here, friends. So I really invite you to go out there and enjoy this and really discover the wonders of uh, this event. And uh, uh, Mila, if, uh, if uh, is it, it is okay, I would like also to, uh, to underline what you told earlier, because this is uh, not, uh, I mean, uh, an ordinary eclipse. Okay, it has nothing special as an eclipse, but let's add this. Tomorrow, it will be the second full moon of January. Okay, and this is not happening all the months, because as I told you, the time it takes to the moon to orbit around us, it is just, uh, it is more or less about uh, one month. Okay, so it means, it simply means that, uh, um, I just want to, to see if I can switch again to my camera, please. Oh, just one moment, friends. Okay. 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 Here we are. Sorry. And as I told you, what I what I what I what I what I'm saying here is this. Tomorrow we will have, of course, another uh, full moon in the same in the same uh, um, month, January. Okay. And uh, it is not happening all the time because it takes basically one month to the moon to complete an orbit around the Earth, friends. And it just means that every month, basically, you have one full moon. Tomorrow, it will be the second full moon of January. The first one was just at the very beginning of the year, friends. And uh, it is something we call, by tradition, blue moon. Nothing to do with the color of the moon, of course. And by the way, tomorrow, at least, the moon will be red for the eclipse. But by tradition, we use this name. So it is relatively rare to have two full moons in the same month. But this is not enough. Another thing is happening, as Mila mentioned earlier. Tomorrow, it will be also a full moon happening close to the minimum distance of the moon from the Earth. Keep in mind that the moon is moving around us. We already say this, but the orbit of the moon around the Earth is not a perfect circle. It is an ellipse. It is, it is some, a bit eccentric, okay? This simply means that the moon is not always at the same distance from us. It is, it is, its distance is somewhere between a minimum value and a maximum value. We call this perigee and apogee. This is something uh, familiar for people handling uh, artificial satellites, for example. So when you have a full moon happening with our satellite closer than usual to us, so close to its perigee, it is, I mean, what tradition now call super moon. It means that the, the moon disk will be a bit larger because the moon is a bit closer and for the same reason a bit brighter. So tomorrow, my friends, we will have a super moon because the full moon will be close to its minimum distance from us. The second full moon of January, what we call by tradition blue moon. And above all, we have a total eclipse of the moon. Putting all this together, these three things together, is not easy because the moon is not eclipsing every time. It is not super moon every time. It is not blue moon every time. 
If you do a quick calculation, you discover that on average, you have this kind of triple event one time for a bit less than three centuries, friends. So this is quite a rare event and we should, be, we should feel lucky to be here now and lucky to go out there and look at this. So tomorrow, if you really have a chance, please take your time in your evening, in your night, to go out there, look up, and enjoy the wonders of this super blue moon total eclipse. This is perhaps <laughs> the quickest way to call it in the right way, my friends. So this is what will happen tomorrow. And this is what the Space India uh, friends are uh, making possible for you to enjoy together. Yeah, thank you. And that the, was great. We, you know, we found out more about it. And uh, does virtual telescope have any plans tomorrow? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, Mila, uh, that uh, the virtual telescope tries to bring uh, uh, as much uh, astronomical events as possible to the community. And uh, but not always everything is visible from where we are. By the way, the virtual telescope project as uh, its telescope in Italy. But uh, earlier, uh, next year, we started a very important partnership with an important observatory in the United States, Tenagra Observatories in Arizona. And we are really working together now to uh, f finalize, I mean, a joint adventure. So our uh, project now has uh, telescopes both in Italy and USA. Why I am underlying this? Simply because you cannot see everything from everywhere. Tomorrow, the eclipse is a wonderful example. You will enjoy it from India, but I will not see it at all in Italy. Because this time, Italy is not in the right place for seeing this. It will be visible in India, it will be seen in the Far East, Australia, even from California, New Mexico, Arizona, the Western USA. So the virtual telescope tomorrow will have uh, some uh, an handful of great collaborators from uh, Australia and USA just taking images from their locations, and they will send their images in real time to us, and we will share those images with our community. So. Uh, tomorrow at uh, 11.30 universal time, basically uh, the Greenwich time, we will start broadcasting all this. And uh, if uh, friends from India would like to contribute, uh, sending images while they will be observing, they can send their images to, to us, to the virtual telescope, and all the contacts are available at our website at www.virtualtelescope.au. If you want to contribute, you are welcome, and we will be very happy, absolutely. And in fact, I have asked uh, you know, different people from Space India who are observing at different locations to uh, send their best pictures to me so I can in turn send it to you. So we do have plans to coordinate with you. And, That's um, great. That's and we great. have more than 20 observations tomorrow and one at India Gate, Delhi. So that's a big public venue. And we wow. expect a lot of people to, to come there. I would, be, I would like to be there with you because I, <laughs> I, as, we, as we told you, as we, as we said yesterday while um, doing some tests for today, uh, astronomy has uh, many, many benefits. And one of the benefits I really like more is this, uh, I mean, social aspect that together, we can really do a lot more that alone. Just, um, I mean, putting together our resources, our, our passion, our knowledge, and going out there together, we can reach more people and even better. And again, I want to underline how important is the work you are doing because involving students, young people, the, men, the, woman, the wo uh, women and men of tomorrow in this kind of things is for me, really, really, I guess, priority. And uh, let's make these people discover the wonders of the universe where we live, really. So I think we have a lot of viewers, because like I told you, each viewer is almost a classroom. So I'd, I'll turn it over to my co-host, Mr. Vikrant Narang. And uh, you know, could you please pose some questions that 
Dr. Massey can answer. Yeah, thank you, Mila. So I guess everyone is warming up. We have many viewers, especially I have, uh, I would like to mention BBPS, that is Bal Bharti Public School from Pitampura, New Delhi. Uh, our educator, uh, we have lots of questions. So I will uh, put the first question. Can we see, uh, because this interests me a lot, can we see the blue band during the totality? This question is by Saurav Sahu of Bal Bharti Public School, Pitampura from New Delhi. Okay, actually the only color you can easily see is uh, the red one. And uh, this is because when the moon will be, in the, will be sitting in the very center of the Earth's shadow, the Earth, uh, the, the red color is the only one you can basically see there. It is the only color reaching the center, I mean, of the air shadow. As soon as you move away from the air shadow, you are basically receiving all the sunlight. So it is not easy to spot those pale differences in colors. But from time to time, I have seen images showing those, those small color variations. So the only thing I can say is to look at this very very carefully and this is why it is worth to look at every lunar eclipse don't believe people saying that every eclipse is the very same than the previous one you already saw it is like enjoying a new sunset it is like enjoying a new rainbow so an opportunity to check yourself what kind of colors you can see but let me say that the red one is uh, the classic a color of the total lunar eclipse because of the reason we saw earlier because it's the color that at, at our atmosphere is sending at its best to the center of the earth shadow this is why the moon will show that color friends thank you uh, professor masi that was My pleasure. Uh, yeah. um the mila can i take the next question uh, yeah go ahead okay so is yeah so this question is uh, from kr mangalam world school in vikaspuri by a student uh, his name is arnav this is again a school in new delhi he asks how lunar eclipse affect climatic conditions of earth well the eclipse the lunar eclipse has not basically effects on uh, our uh, climate because it is not uh, uh, related to this basically the moon is outside the earth system for under this point of view i mean it is simply the earth sending its shadow to the moon if we were on the moon of course during the totality we will uh, we will stay in the shadow of the earth and if we were there of course we could experience a very very cold moment there after staying at the sun with the all the with the with the sunlight and uh, all the heat around jumping into the eclipse from the moon point of view will mean you will jump into a very low temperature so as for the earth the eclipse is not affecting the cl climate on the earth it is something not it is something outside i mean the atmosphere and all the complex system making uh, uh, i mean i mean influencing the climate of this planet so it is not something directly related to this but uh, again i want to say another thing of course the atmosphere is the key factor here explaining why we are seeing red on the moon during totality okay of course the conditions of the atmosphere affect what to, how much light can reach the moon during totality. For example, a, a to, lunar total eclipses during very strong um, vol volcanic activity on the Earth are different because you have a lot of dust from the volcano in the atmosphere, may, uh, giving a different opacity to the atmosphere of the Earth. And you can have, in this case, you can have, of course, a darker eclipse for this. I just, I'm simply saying here that when you see the color of the moon during a total lunar eclipse, you are basically seeing also 
something from the atmosphere. Okay, if there are a lot of dust in the atmosphere, like from a, a huge volcano explosion, for example, this will show because the atmosphere will uh, uh, leave, uh, will, will, uh, um, will uh, I mean, uh, address less light to the moon because the dust will make the atmosphere, our atmosphere, a bit more opaque. So it is affecting this. So in some way, these local things of the Earth are reflecting to the eclipse out there. There is such a wonderful connection every time, really. Um, next question. But I would like to, Vikrant, I'd like to point out uh, that many of us are doing tomorrow the luminosity change activity, uh, trying to match really? it to the Dan Jean scale. So whatever Jean Lucas said is, uh, we'll find out how it's, you know, what we observe based on that. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And this is something of very uh, of great importance because, of course, classifying the eclipses this way is making possible for us to record some information and over the centuries then will be used also by scientists to understand thanks to these estimates also the evolution of our atmosphere for example and this is a wonderful a wonderful thing that you are doing i mean recording the brightness and all these other things great job really yeah, Vikrant, go ahead. Yeah. Next question. Okay. Yeah, next. I would like to take this question by one of our educators, Rohe Brahman. He is actually the question is from a student, Yukti, from GD Goinka Public School, Sector 9, Rohini, New Delhi. Her question is, what is the importance from the research point of view of total lunar eclipses? She wants to know about research. Uh, is it just something we are observing or can we do something about it? Well, these days, I mean, the scientific importance of uh, a total lunar eclipse is, uh, I mean, very small. It is not like the solar eclipse yeah. that we really use for some investigations of the solar corona and something like this. But I want to say this, even if we don't have some very high scientific importance in such kind of things, they are still very rewarding to see so tomorrow i don't expect any any dramatic uh, uh, scientific news from the total eclipse and uh, this is why perhaps many astronomers will not look at it and I, I i i suggest also to i mean to my colleagues that tomorrow will uh, perhaps consider the full moon even in eclipse a nice chance to take some rest you know because the moon. I, I, I want to say this, by the way. You know, the full moon, which is the condition we really need as a first thing to open a lunar eclipse, is very bright in the sky. Okay, and during the full moon, observers of the sky are often taking some rest. I mean, because you see just a few stars, it is not the best moment to observe. It is like living under a very big light, just okay. covering, flooding the whole sky. You know. But during the totality, for a while, it can be 90 minutes, 60 minutes, something like that, you have a much darker sky, okay? So for a while, even if the moon is uh, technically full, thanks to the eclipse, you have much darker around. And you can also enjoy your uh, usual faint objects, okay? Okay, but also looking at the eclipse. I just want to tell that even professional astronomers should look at the eclipse for their own enjoyment. I am a professional astronomer, but I am never, never tired to look at these things, even if, like in the case of the total lunar eclipse, the scientific return is basically small. I mean, so no matter this, it is something which is great to look and enjoy. Uh Professor Masi, uh, actually, before asking next question, I would li like to make a quick comment. There are questions about, uh, there have been some questions I've seen, at least one that if there are any countries who can't view the, uh, who are not seeing uh, lunar eclipse, how can you watch it online? So I would like to make this comment as Professor Masi pointed out. Uh, his website is www.virtualtelescope.eu. 
they are hosting a live webcast which you can go and check out if the eclipse is not visible in your country next question i would uh, i hope that helps next question i would like to tell uh, is professor masi we are getting a lot of questions about virtual telescope people want to know about virtual telescope uh, once again i would uh, one question i would like to post uh, from chitra khatri uh, she is an educator and she is rep uh, representing bal bharti public school pitampura the student who is asking this question is uh, Savir, uh, his spelling is S A V I R. The question is, uh, is there what what is does uh, I'm paraphrasing the question. Does virtual telescope has any project for astronomy enthusiast students? So, Professor Masid, I would like to uh, because representing everyone, I would like you to generally talk about the projects, the kind of things uh, we can do on virtual telescope. Thank you for uh, this question, uh, and uh, I'm very happy to answer. Of course, the, the first thing I had in mind when I started the virtual telescope, well, it was uh, more than 10 years ago, is just to make possible for people to discover the universe. So the virtual telescope basically is a resource for everyone. And the virtual telescope is uh, now doing several different things, also thanks to the important partnership with Tanagra Observatories. And by the way, we will be officially presenting this very, very soon. So the virtual telescope makes possible to everyone, of course, including students and schools. And just to underline this, I really think that students are very precious for the future. So this is why the virtual telescope is really uh, is considering students with the highest priority. So first of all, students and schools are truly very welcome to use the virtual telescope. You can simply contact us through the website that you kindly mentioned earlier. There is a contact section then. You can write an email at info at uh, virtualtelescope.au and we can be in touch to arrange something. There are several things then that, that we can do. We can, for example, provide original material if you have to, if you want to organize uh, like a laboratory, let me say this, you, you want to measure, uh, for example, the distance of an asteroid and we can take the images you need for do, to do this calculation or you can just understand how stars live and uh, evolve. We can plan an observing activity, showing all this in, for example, during an observing uh, uh, hour, we, in one hour, you can observe a lot of things with our telescope, okay? Of course, with our comment, if you want. You just need to connect to the virtual telescope. Of course, you need to have an account to do this kind of thing. So it is important to arrange things earlier with us. And at that point, you have the telescope for you, just observing what you want, comets, asteroids, exploding stars, whatever you like. And of course, all this in real time. I will never be tired to underline this. The virtual telescope makes possible to people to see the universe in real time because when you connect to our telescopes, both in Italy and both in Arizona Tenagra Observatories, you are really looking through the telescope in that very moment. And this is also another interesting thing to underline. There is, a, a, if I remember right, there is a, a difference in time between Italy, for example, and India. You are four hours and 30 minutes ahead. It just means that during during your um, morning, likely during your uh, school time, you can use our telescopes because in Italy it's still dark. We are still in the night. So you can use this very easily and even better in the US. So this is why it is important to have this kind of resources all around. So in short, the virtual telescope can be, of course, be used by schools, teachers and students this is one of the this is the audience we really like more by the way and uh, if you are interested just contact us and we can discuss depending on the age of the students the needs of the teacher we are open 
we like to interact and find together the best for the students. So please, if you are interested to use the virtual telescope and Tanagra observatories for this kind of educational activities, just write us and we will be happy to answer. Absolutely. So I think I'll I'll take that forward from on behalf of space since uh, Dr. Masi so generously offered. So we'll talk to teachers and try to get together some requests and take it forward to you. Thank you. Thank you. Always consider that we are the virtual telescope is simply a tool to discover something wonderful where we live, the universe. The, I am obsessed by this idea, friends. <laughs> I really want that everyone on this planet understands where she or he is living on the earth, of course, but the earth is just the beginning of something much larger and wonderful as our planet. We call it universe. And even if you are not a scientist, you can truly enjoy this wonderful universe. This is something we really want to make clear. Everyone out there can have the opportunity to understand and uh, enjoy the place where she or he is living. Yeah. Vikrant, next question. We only have a short time left. Yeah, I uh, I just wanted to acknowledge few students because I can see a lot of questions coming up and uh, these are very beautiful questions. Uh, but I won't ask them to Professor Masi just to acknowledge them. I'm saying these questions. Uh, there's a question from a uh, school in Dwarka, which telescope is better, refractor or reflector? Uh, please don't answer Professor Masi yet. Uh, uh, Vikrant, yeah. he has yeah. to... So, next question. So I would like to ask this question by one of our educator, Mukul Yadav. So how did you figure out... Uh, he's an educator with uh, space. His question is, how did you figure out when Starry, uh, night, starry night over Rhone was painted? Any insight on that? So I guess we'd love to hear about that. <laughs> Excuse me, can you kindly repeat the second question because I had yeah. a little audio problem. Thank you. Oh, okay. So uh, one of our educators, Mukul, he's asking, how did you figure out when Starry Night over Rhone was painted? Okay, okay, wow. <laughs> well, as for the first question, uh, uh, reflectors and refractors, it is a, a long question. It, if I, I used to answer this. If one of them, reflectors or refractors, uh, were better than the other, or the other one was already gone. But we have both of them. It just means that they are good for something. Okay. And the, the main problem with the refractors is uh, that they are much more expensive if you want larger telescopes because you, uh, you need the sunglass to make lenses and in, in refractor telescopes, the light of the stars has to cross the glass you are using. It just means that you really need very special glasses, which is, of course, uh, much more expensive than normal glass that can be used to make mirrors for reflectors. And this is just to give you an idea why reflector, refractors are much more expensive sometimes than reflector. But if you really, if you just want a large telescope to observe faint objects. So you really need a large telescope. The only chance you have is to go with reflector because otherwise you will need really a lot of money. And professional telescopes are now using mirrors, basically. So this is uh, just to quickly uh, answer the first question. As for the second one, well, thank you for uh, reminding the, uh, in the Starry Night Over the Road by Vincent van Gogh. And it has been perhaps uh, the most intriguing study I have done in my life because putting together uh, the, I mean, astronomy and heart, it is something uh, happening, like, happening like a strange thing. For many people, science is one thing, heart is another thing. This is absolutely wrong. There is, we, are, we, are, we are facing a beautiful world with many interesting things. It is like different languages, okay? Art is a language, science is a language, and so on. And we are not, we are not here to divide things. So if I, I can use astronomy to better understand a, a very important artistic work, like the painting from Van Gogh, I'm very happy. And I still remember the first time I saw that painting, I was, uh, uh, 
much younger than now. I was a student in the in the primary school here in Italy, and uh, when our professor of uh, fine arts showed that that painting of Van Gogh, of course, the first thing I saw were the stars because at the time I was already in love with the sky. And uh, while growing up year after year, I started to think if there was a way for me to understand, first of all, if the stars present in the starry night over the room were real stars or not. In other words, was Van Gogh facing the Big Dipper, which is present in the, in the painting, while he was painting or it was just something in his memory? And I wanted to understand if Van Gogh was observing the sky while painting. And I was able to conclude that, yes, Van Gogh was really observing the sky while while he was painting those stars. So basically, he was an astronomer like us, friends, and uh, he, he, he also wanted to introduce the stars like a, a very important element okay, of the environment, of the panorama. And uh, using the real star has been, for me, in that painting, a great discovery. And uh, it has been, uh, that painting has been present in my life for decades now. And uh, after I studied it, I love it even more because I understood a deeper meaning and I could see Van Gogh while painting, looking up from time to time and enjoying the beauty of the stars. Something that our young people has to do all together with us. So, in fact, that's very exciting to hear because uh, Jean-Luca, I see on your Facebook page that after any special celestial event, you post a picture over the uh, cityscape of Rome, like for meteor showers or special conjunct conjunctions. So that's very meaningful then. <laughs> yes, I, I, uh, Mila, uh, thank you for mentioning this because I, I really like, the, 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 I, I like to keep alive this idea. We are not working to divide things. I mean, the stars are above the earth and on the earth, you have beautiful monuments just telling of the history, the culture, the traditions of the place where you are. The same there in India, you have very wonderful place in your important and ancient history. So putting together the stars and this deep meaning of our own culture is for me a truly winning factor. And this is something I try to do every time that I can. So, Vikrant, maybe we just have time for one more question. Do you just see it? Because we have to close in a couple of minutes. Maybe uh, one question uh, from a school which we haven't asked. So, uh, Shagun Dube, uh, our educator, the student name is Jay, Indian Heights School, Dwarka. Uh, why does an uh, average lunar eclipse last for 107 minutes and a solar eclipse for only 5 to 10 minutes? Yes. Unfortunately, there is this huge difference as for their duration. During the total lunar eclipse, you have a lot of time, more than one hour, okay? Because the shadow of the Earth is huge compared to the size of the Moon, okay? So, once the Moon enters inside the Earth's shadow, it will move through it for a while, okay? And tomorrow, you will enjoy this for a while. Uh, more than one hour. When you have a solar eclipse, you have to face the very small dimension, okay, of the moon shadow this time, because tomorrow the moon will jump into the huge shadow of the Earth. But during the solar eclipse, you have to change the roles here. The, the, and the, in that case, it is the moon sending its shadow to the Earth. But the moon has a very small shadow to the point that it, the, the, sh the, the shadow of the moon is just uh, uh, eating a very small portion of the Earth. And you really need to be inside that little strip of shadow on the Earth to see the totality. And of course, that little thing, that little shadow is moving pretty fast. This is why you are just enjoying the solar eclipse for a, a few minutes because you are inside something very small and moving fast. 
so it it arrives and lives in minutes and uh, sometimes if you have for example a five minutes long total solar eclipse you have to be lucky because it is it is a long time for a solar eclipse but of course there is also another big factor here while tomorrow okay everyone with the moon above the horizon at the eclipse moment will see the eclipse during the solar eclipse you really need to be in a very specific portion of the earth okay right. this is why you can see in your lifetime several lunar eclipses even if you don't travel but if you want to see a solar total eclipse very likely you have to travel sometimes very far from your country because you have to reach the exact place from where the solar eclipse will be total and yeah and i think with that that uh, we we are going to have to wind up because uh, dr massey is uh, has to leave so we are so excited that no <laughs> uh i mean i hope we'll have a chance to get to you again sometime in the future absolutely yeah. absolutely i will be i will be very pleased so if you will think uh, uh, this can be useful i'm here i will be happy to join again really that's that's so great and uh, thanks from my side and it was really interesting because you conveyed not only facts about the total lunar eclipse but about your love for astronomy and uh, how the students can also grow into it and enjoy the sky Vikrant, any comments? Yeah, to I could relate. I could relate very much to uh, the talk, and it was uh, exciting. Uh, I had to like take a lot of questions, but uh, I really enjoyed being here. Thank you, and look forward okay. to meet you in India. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, I want to thank you first of all, of course, for inviting me, but even more for doing your job because it is important. I. I I apologize if I repeat myself, but it is very important to work to have our community, the young people, but everyone in our community aware of our universe, understanding the science, okay, but also the wonder, because the science is wonderful. Like heart, scientists has to be creative to understand nature. So, and I also want to thank all the schools, the educators, and the students who wanted to join, because their ability is telling us that they want to be with us learning and discovering all this together. So thank you for this opportunity. And I wish all the teachers, educators and the students and also to you a great job. And uh, uh, I, I uh, take care and uh, keep looking at the sky and keep looking, enjoy science and nature. Absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Massey. Thank you, Vikrant and all our viewers for joining in. And uh, let's look forward to a great observation of total lunar eclipse tomorrow. Thank Happy you. Happy eclipse to everyone. Thank Happy you. Eclipse. Thank Happy you. Eclipse.